Impossible Foods announcing its grocery store debut at Gelson's today. It will be available at all 27 outlets in Southern California with plans to announce additional retailers later this month. Did I say that right? Is it Soft G or Hard G? Gelson's? I think that's right. Okay, there we go. Joining us now uh, in a first on CNBC interview is Impossible Foods CEO Patrick Brown. Impossible Foods is also ranked number 27 on CNBC's 2019 Disruptor 50 list. Patrick, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Wilfred. So, so tell me how big this can be for the company in terms of retail versus being uh, in, in restaurants. Is it going to be uh, bigger in the next couple of years than, than what you sell to, to restaurants? Well, uh, yeah, we're currently in about 17,000 restaurants. That's growing uh, rapidly. And we expect um, our, our sales in retail to really skyrocket once we, once we uh, start expanding. And it's, it's more than just a, a little baby step in uh, our history because this is the first time that consumers will actually be able to have the experience of uh, cooking with our product, which is categorically different from just being handed a burger or, or a spaghetti bolognese or something like that uh, by a server because um, our product is really the first ba plant-based product ever that entirely recapitulates all the magic of uh, meat in the kitchen, the explosion of flavor and aroma when you cook it, and that whole experience that's, that's never been done with a plant-based product before. So it's going to be mind-blowing for, for consumers. So your, your competitor, Beyond Meat, has already been in, in the grocery store, and retail is a big part of its business. How tough is the competition between the two of you to get into various retailers and fast food restaurants at this point? Uh, at this point, it's, it's, it's not even really a factor. We, we have more demand. Uh, we're, we're just uh, racing to keep up with the demand. Um, and the only competition that we care about has always been uh, the incumbent animal-based meat industry. At this point, uh, uh, you know, more than 99% of all the meat sold uh, in the U.S. and the world is made from animals. And so that's where the real competition is. That's the only competition we focus on. Patrick, we've been having a debate uh, with uh, some analysts both today and in past weeks about whether or not your products are good for the environment as opposed to specifically good for the consumer, that they're not perhaps that much of a health improvement to, to real meat, albeit that they are much better for the environment. Where do you stand on that? Well, we've always had a policy that we're never going to release a product that we don't believe is better from a health nutrition standpoint for the consumer than what it replaces. Um, so as you said, there's, there's absolutely no question about that the being better for the environment. But uh, we also believe in many ways it's better for consumers. First of all, um, uh, it's produced without uh, the use of antibiotics, with all the, the um, hazards of antibiotic resistance associated with that. Um, it doesn't involve the uh, kind of uh, uh, really bad environment of a slaughterhouse that, that uh, causes uh, meat to be sort of a uh, sketchy product from, from a public health standpoint. But from a consumer health standpoint, what's important is it has zero cholesterol, but and, and lower saturated fat, lower calories, but all the protein and all the iron and all the micronutrients that they would get uh, uh, from meat made from a cow. So uh, we wouldn't be selling the product if we didn't believe that it is better for the consumer than what it replaces.